On the night of August 8, 2012, the dash cam of a Louisville Metro Police Department cruiser captured a tense moment. An officer pulled over a Honda Accord with expired plates. Inside the vehicle were three people. The officer quickly noticed the nervous and anxious behavior of the driver and passengers. His own car were driving around for three hours and making a drug buy. As they were exiting the vehicle, one or two of them banged on the trunk. Um, that's when I heard the white female laughing. After a few seconds, the officer heard strange sounds coming from the car's trunk. Listening closely, he identified the sounds as kicking and yelling. The officer called for backup and forcefully detained the three suspects. When the officers cautiously opened the trunk, they found a man with a towel tied around his head and his hands bound behind his back. The commotion in the trunk got the cops' attention. Officers then call for backup and individually pull all three suspects from the car. Then, with weapons drawn, officers cautiously pop the trunk and find the kidnapped clerk inside. The man in the trunk turned out to be the owner of the vehicle. He had been working the closing shift at a gas station seven miles down the road. After closing up the store and walking to his car, he was attacked by the three suspects. They stole his car, tied him up, and stuffed him in the trunk before fleeing. The trunk was popped. I exposed my hands like the officers asked me to do. They opened up the hood and there was probably eight or ten cop cars there. On December 31st, 2023, a 911 call alerted Weber Area Dispatch about a car driving west on I-84 toward Riverdale Road. The driver, identified as 19-year-old Carter Edelman, was reportedly highly intoxicated. Police officers attempted a traffic stop, but Edelman sped away. It helps. He was doing 80 on Riverdale. Okay, it looks like I'm ready for a trooper behind him. So. He's at 1900 West. He's probably going to be going south. A high-speed chase ensued, stretching through Roy and Riverdale and involving multiple officers from different agencies. During the chase, Edelman deliberately hit two police cars. Eventually, officers fired at Edelman's vehicle, bringing the pursuit to an end. Both law enforcement and Edelman sustained minor injuries. In another incident, a police dash cam captured an officer noticing a man running along the road. Aware of an escapee in the area, the officer stopped him. The officer extensively questioned the man, asking for his name, address, and identification. You, you live around here, buddy? No. Where you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form of identification on you? No, man. What's your no. name? Robert Jones. Robert Jones? The man, identified as Richard Lee McNair, the actual prison escapee, desperately tried to convince the officer that he was just a jogger. Despite McNair's obvious lies, the officer let him go. I'll be out until we find this on the gun. Well, my dad's an auxiliary detective. In Where Dallas, at? In Dallas. They got oh, okay. The possum is what they call it. Yeah. He's 70 years old and he's been doing it since 63. A police dash cam captured a terrifying moment when a speeding semi-trailer crashed into several stopped cars during a traffic jam on Interstate 70 in Lakewood, about eight miles west of Denver. The massive collision involved four semis and 24 cars, resulting in a huge fire. Followed by a freeway fire, scorching several cars to their core. There is a complete fire. Things are exploding. Denver authorities now confirming four fatalities. The coroner's office still working on identifying the victims. The driver responsible for the crash was identified as Lazaro Aguilera Medeiros, a 23-year-old from Texas. Despite the severity of the crash, he was not seriously injured. At a press conference, police stated that there was no evidence of drugs or alcohol and no indication that Aguilera Medeiros intentionally caused the crash. Unfortunately, four people lost their lives in the fiery accident. Police say Aguilera is cooperating, and even though they don't think he acted deliberately, they are holding him responsible for the deadly accident. Police dash cam footage from a California highway patrol vehicle shows a dramatic moment. 
The two officers inside were responding to a reported structure fire when a massive mudslide suddenly occurred on the road. By the time the officers noticed it, it was too late to react. The patrol vehicle was swept into the mudslide, lifted off the ground, and spun around by the force of the rushing mud. Lightning dash cam video shows officers responding to a fire when they unknowingly drove directly into the path of the mud flow. The fast moving tide of muck and debris lifted the vehicle off the ground. Miraculously, the officers managed to regain traction and drive ahead of the slide. With little else they could do, they warned pedestrians and watched the terrifying sight of the mudslide barreling down the road. Floating along, after about 15 seconds, the vehicle regained traction and both officers managed to escape unharmed. In Clearwater, Florida, two police cruisers, both equipped with dash cams, were responding to a traffic stop on North Keene Road. Just two minutes after they arrived, a small plane hovering in the air slowly came into view. It quickly became clear that the plane was descending and heading straight for them. The plane's right wing clipped a tree while descending, causing it to spin out of control and crash on the side of the road. Dash cam video shows the crash of a small plane in Florida. Watch your screen as it comes down. Two deputies responded to a call for an unrelated incident yesterday morning. Look at that close call. The four-seater plane had taken off from a nearby airport and was piloted by 61-year-old Mark Allen Benedict with one passenger aboard. Due to engine failure, Mark had no choice but to crash land in the middle of the road after reporting the issue to the airport. Miraculously, both Mark and his passenger walked away from the wreckage with minimal injuries, and no one on the ground was hurt. The pilot and the passenger were not hurt. Authorities are still investigating the cause of the crash. Police dash cam footage captures a wild incident where a woman steals a cop car after escaping her handcuffs. The woman had been arrested after falling from the ceiling of a burning apartment. When the police checked on her, they found she had drugs and meth. She was then handcuffed and placed in the police car. In the car, the woman is visibly agitated and looks for a way out. She manages to slip out of the handcuffs and notices the window is open. When a police officer briefly checks on her, she pretends to be calm until he leaves. She then takes off her hoodie, slides through the window to the front seat, and steals the car. The officers quickly notice and chase after her in their vehicles. The woman reaches a top speed of 126 miles per hour, driving through three communities before being caught. The chase lasts about 10 minutes, covering 20 miles. Dash cam footage shows a dramatic police chase involving a group of teenagers who stole a red Kia in Wisconsin. The video captures the teens driving recklessly to avoid capture, nearly causing several accidents. Lining up, it's going northbound. In pursuit, east on Orchard. The pursuit continues for a while when suddenly, the Kia starts emitting thick smoke. Despite this, the teens keep driving at high speed, still trying to evade the officers. The officers attempt to take another route to cut off the teens, but the Kia speeds past them, with fire blazing underneath the car. Due to the flames, the red Kia eventually slows down, allowing the officers to finally catch the teens. He's going on Connect Connect from 6A. Go. Lots of flames underneath the vehicle. In dashcam footage, everything seems normal until a police officer spots the driver ahead, appearing highly intoxicated. The officer tries to pull him over, but the driver speeds up, attempting to escape. The chase lasts for a while, with the driver weaving through traffic dangerously. Eventually, the chase ends when the driver crashes into a parked car on the street. Two 
two people were captured early Monday morning by Mesquite police after a wild chase into Dallas. A dash cam captured the scene vividly. A sharp-eyed police officer noticed several individuals sitting inside a parked 2001 black Chevrolet Tahoe, one of whom was donning a mask. When the driver caught sight of the officer, they bolted out of the parking lot. Despite the officer's attempts to stop them, the driver adamantly refused and led the officer on a pursuit into Dallas. The driver eventually halted near Lemon Avenue and Peak Street, prompting three individuals to leap out of the vehicle and flee on foot. While two of them were nabbed by the police, the driver managed to slip away. Milwaukee police engaged in an intense pursuit of a reckless driver behind the wheel of a sleek black Chevy. The chase lasted for some time until the black Chevy collided with a nearby lamppost. Swiftly, the officer parked his vehicle and hurried to assist the driver. From the dash cam footage, it's evident that the driver was injured, but thankfully, the officer had already requested backup. Crash, 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 crash! Sherman North, Sherman North! The video began with an Indiana deputy driving through the darkness when he suddenly found himself ensnared in the grip of an intense EF2 tornado. The deputy could be seen desperately attempting to outpace the tornado in a frantic bid to reach safety. Dashcam video showed a Clark County deputy chasing a woman accused of driving away from law enforcement on three prior occasions in Ohio. The pursuit came to an end after the woman identified as Paula Potter lost control, hit a light pole, and a tree. Authorities said Potter was arrested for multiple misdemeanor and felony warrants and charged with two additional felonies. Her passenger had two warrants. Potter was taken to a local hospital and then taken to jail, while her passenger was taken to a local hospital in serious condition. The dash cam footage captured a heart-pounding chase where a 49-year-old man named Michael Roll raced at breakneck speed to evade a police officer. This nail-biting incident unfolded around 9.30 in the morning on a Saturday. Roll careened off the side of the road, tumbling down a cliff in a frightening climax. Roll stands accused of blowing through a stop sign on Boudry Road and colliding with another driver on Boshin Road. According to the affidavit, Roll turned hostile when the officer attempted to approach him and jot down his license plate number. Court records indicate he hurled racial slurs at the officer. The affidavit further states that Roll bolted from the scene when backup arrived. Legal documents reveal he reached speeds nearing 100 miles per hour and was apprehended after flipping his car and crashing into a fence by the roadside. He now faces charges of assault, hit and run, eluding, and driving with a suspended license. I can't access him. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! The copies of the car is on the other side of the fence. Get on the ground! Seven twenty one, twenty one, twenty seven, The dash cam footage revealed the shocking moment when a police squad car accidentally struck Madison Dixon, 
a wanted individual during a pursuit. Dixon was being chased by officers Kayla Johnson, Detective Ronnie Letherman, and Officer Jonathan Grafton after she fired shots at Johnson and Ronnie. Dixon had been wanted for a series of crimes in the Tulsa area, including multiple shootings. One incident occurred in Midtown, resulting in a man being rushed to the hospital. Additionally, there was a shooting in the parking lot of a Walgreens, an armed robbery at a Best Buy store, and a report of someone pointing a weapon at an AMC theater. On October 7, 2022, around 1.29 a.m., dash cam footage captured New Haven police rushing to a reported car crash near the intersection of Chapel Street and Blatchley Avenue in the Fairhaven neighborhood. Upon arrival, the driver of the vehicle unexpectedly opened fire, striking an officer in the shoulder and once in the ear. The cop bravely returned fire, causing the suspect, later identified as 36-year-old Jose Claudio, to flee from the scene. Claudio is later apprehended at his residence on Putnam Street in Hartford without incident. A newly released dash cam video revealed a police officer distractedly texting while behind the wheel, mere moments before a car crash. Authorities concluded that the other driver was to blame after crossing the median on August 15, 2019. The dash cam footage vividly depicts the other vehicle veering over a curb amidst trees and colliding with the police officer. Sing will attempt to call 911. If you wish to cancel the call, please hold the phone button. On Thursday, January 18, 2024, dash cam footage captured trooper Jesse Gregory conversing with a driver from the passenger side during a traffic stop. Suddenly, a black SUV collided with the stationary vehicle on Interstate 40 at Samaran Road, propelling it into a grassy area beside the highway. On Sunday, May 19, 2024, around 8.19 p.m., a Fort Worth police officer's dash cam captured a tense moment. The officer received an alert about a possible suspect vehicle linked to a shooting near the 4800 block of Miller Avenue, which occurred the previous day, on Saturday, May 18, 2024. As the officer trailed the suspect vehicle, a witness informed investigators that the suspect pulled over and exited with his hands raised. But before the officer could activate his emergency lights, the suspect unexpectedly grabbed a gun and opened fire. On Saturday, May 18th, around 6 p.m., the day prior to the officer involved shooting, the suspect, Mr. Thompson, is observed on video pulling up to a business located on the 4800 block of Miller Avenue. He then exits his vehicle and begins to approach an alleyway behind this location. Despite the danger, the officer swiftly retaliated, prompting the suspect to retreat into his vehicle and flee. The officer pursued for about a mile until his patrol vehicle malfunctioned. 
Fort Worth officers then took over, continuing the chase into a neighboring city. They eventually apprehended the suspect, identified as 33-year-old Devereya Thompson, at his Arlington residence within two hours of the confrontation. All right, take your time, take your time. Lay down on your stomach, lay down on your stomach. Lay down on your stomach. Lay down, lay down flat. I'm ready, Bobby, you ready? I'm ready. The Brevard County Sheriff's Office recently shared dash cam footage revealing a harrowing attack on two deputies during a routine traffic stop on US-192 in West Melbourne on August 30, 2021. The incident unfolded around 1 p.m. on a Monday afternoon when Deputy Brian Potters pulled over a vehicle just west of Interstate 95 in West Melbourne. In the car? All right, partner. He will talk to you. Hey. Is that all? You're, yeah. You got, I'll watch it for you. He's all right. I got babies. Oh, you got a dog too? Hell. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure. Upon arrival, Deputy Tyler Toman joined Deputy Potters to assist with the three individuals in the vehicle. During the stop, it was discovered that there was a baby in the back seat. When the passenger in the back seat, identified as 38-year-old Paris Wilder of Coco, was asked to exit the vehicle, he promptly stepped out and brandished a short stock rifle, firing at Deputy Potters. Deputy Potters was struck in the lower leg, prompting both deputies to return fire to protect themselves, the others present, and the two-month-old baby caught in the middle of the shootout. I'll, I'll make sure they're all right. I got babies too, man. Huh? Okay. Shit! 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 Deputy Toman swiftly engaged Wilder, firing multiple shots and neutralizing the threat. Unfortunately, the suspect was pronounced dead at the scene, ensuring the safety of the deputies and those involved. On May 1, 2023, around 11.38 a.m., a patrol officer was conducting a routine traffic stop with a gray 2012 BMW on southbound Fairfax County Parkway near Braddock Road. Meanwhile, a 17-year-old driver in a black BMW M3 was speeding northbound on Fairfax County Parkway. Losing control, the black BMW spun around, crossed the median, and collided with a community member's vehicle before slamming into the officer's patrol car. Bravo, serving rescue, serving units, accident, right here in County Parkway, south after Braddock. My cruiser was hit, driver was hit, I'm trying to check on injuries. On May 20th, 2023, dash cam footage captured Arkansas State Police Trooper Jackson Schumite initiating a traffic stop on a black GMC Sierra along with Trooper Van Schoik and Trooper Escamilla. Behind the wheel was 42-year-old Christopher Monroe, who had previously evaded police on May 4th and the 19th. Just 10 days earlier, authorities in Rockwell County, Texas, had issued a warrant for his arrest for fleeing in a motor vehicle. As police tried to block him in, Monroe fled, prompting a chase. Early on, Trooper Van Schoik attempted to halt the vehicle but ended up sliding into a concrete barrier instead. Despite this setback, the pursuit continued. Monroe and the pursuing police cars raced over the Arkansas River at speeds of around 120 miles per hour. Monroe then doubled back but only made it a few blocks before being rear-ended by police, causing his truck to roll and crash into a brick wall. The 
impact was so intense that the police car itself nearly flipped. Upon removing Monroe from the vehicle, officers discovered 64 grams of ecstasy, 100 grams of meth, 436 grams of cocaine, and other drugs inside. Fox Valley Metro Police reported a 14-year-old boy in a clown mask caused a disturbance at Kimberly's Sunset Park late Sunday afternoon. The teen blocked a one-lane road in the park where a father and son were driving. Upon being asked to move, the teen brandished a real knife, holding it menacingly but not chasing or displaying it. This marked the second incident at Sunset Park that day. Earlier, police were called when people spotted a clown carrying what seemed to be a sledgehammer. The clown explained it was a plastic prop for a game of hide-and-seek with friends. On November 11, 2018, Washington County Corporal Brett Thompson pulled over a driver in a green Saturn vehicle for a traffic violation near Steel Road in Tawnytown. Instead of stopping, the driver sped off, turning onto Steel Road and slowing down, but refusing to halt. Finally, the driver stopped on Steel Road. As Corporal Thompson approached, the driver opened fire, prompting Corporal Thompson to return fire in a tense exchange of shots before the suspect fled eastward on Steel Road. He drove a little, stopped, and dropped off a woman from the car, then drove away once more. The woman surrendered and was taken into custody by the officer. What the hell is he doing? Get on your knees. All right, put that down. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol recently shared dash cam footage of a trooper-involved shooting that occurred in Woodward last August. According to reports, Trooper Austin Ellis tried to pull over a driver, Arturo Ramirez, for not wearing a seatbelt. However, Ramirez didn't stop as expected. Instead, he drove into the parking lot of a Days Inn hotel on Highway 183 and started shooting at the trooper. Despite being hit in the chest, Trooper Ellis's bulletproof vest saved him, while Ramirez was wounded in the hand by return fire. Ramirez then fled the scene with the trooper in pursuit. Trying to escape, Ramirez sought refuge in a residential garage along Western Avenue before allegedly breaking into a nearby outbuilding. A brave lieutenant from the Walton County Sheriff's Office intervened in a situation involving a suicidal man armed with a rifle, as captured on dash cam footage. The video depicts the man standing outside a vehicle when Lieutenant Mark Hess approaches. Suddenly, the man brandishes the rifle prompting Lieutenant Hess to draw his own service gun. Despite repeated pleas from Lieutenant Hess to lower the weapon, the distressed man refuses and advances towards him, demanding to be shot. With courage and quick thinking, Lieutenant Hess tackles the man to the ground as he attempts to pick up the rifle. Another officer secures the weapon while Lieutenant Hess subdues the man with a chokehold. The police dash camera footage captures the terrifying moments leading up to a train colliding with a van at a rail crossing in Brook Park. The incident unfolded near Route 237 and Holland Road on Thursday. According to police, an AT&T van veered past the railroad gate and got stuck on the tracks. In the video, Trooper Mac Mickens was on the Florida Turnpike in West Palm Beach. He was walking back to his vehicle after pulling over a speeding driver when another driver collided with him. Mickens, a 60-year-old trooper, found it challenging to rise as his pelvis was severely shattered and his face was bloodied. After several minutes on the ground, Trooper Mickens managed to reach for his radio to call for assistance. The dash cam footage reveals police officers engaged in a lengthy pursuit of a vehicle in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Eventually, two other officers managed to block the suspect's path and successfully capture them. On March 25th, 
Dash cam footage captures Deputy Wayne Wagner stopping a truck at the mobile gas station along 4th Street North in St. Petersburg and assaulting a woman. Based on the video evidence, there's no doubt that Deputy Wagner attacked the woman, identified as Paige Taylor. Shockingly, Wagner fabricated the entire incident, falsely claiming that Taylor had initiated the attack by pushing him. He even charged Taylor with battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting an officer with violence. However, after Sheriff Gualtieri reviewed the footage, the charges against Taylor were dropped. Wagner faced disciplinary action, including suspension for violating the department's pursuit policy, and ultimately, he was terminated for employing excessive force and fabricating a police report. The Ohio State Highway Patrol shared dash cam footage of a trooper getting struck by a car during a traffic stop. Sergeant Jim Smith from the Chardon Post was conversing with another driver at the roadside when a car collided with his cruiser and also struck him. Fortunately, the driver responsible for the accident escaped injury, but no explanation was provided regarding the cause of the collision. North Salt Lake police recently released dashboard camera footage capturing the moment a Utah Transit Authority frontrunner train collided with a FedEx truck on a Saturday morning. UTA's investigation revealed that the crossing gates were not functioning properly, with the flashing lights and bells, which usually warn of an approaching train, inactive due to a power outage or signal loss. Reportedly, the severe ice and snow conditions at the time affected the gates, causing them to remain in the default down and active position as programmed. After an employee intervened, the gates moved to the up position leading to the accident. Fortunately, there were no serious injuries in the collision. The police recently released dramatic dash cam footage showing a carjacking suspect firing shots at officers from the Chicago Police Department. The footage captures Charles Lawson, 24, shooting a gun out of the stolen vehicle's window. One of the bullets grazed the officer behind the wheel in the face as the squad car pursued Lawson. He then continued firing at another responding squad car, prompting officers in that vehicle to return fire. Lawson eventually crashed into a parked car near 100th and Eggleston. He appeared to toss the gun out of the window before being taken into custody. A dash cam video reveals a brutal attack on a Brooklyn Park police officer. When the officer tries to make the arrest, trouble erupts. Carr suddenly turns and unleashes a barrage of punches on Hyman. The two engage in a struggle, tumbling to the ground. Nearby residents hear Hyman's cries for help and dial 911 for backup. The video captures Hyman's desperate pleas as Carr continues to assault him, punching, choking, and wrestling. Before backup arrives, Hyman fires his gun but misses Carr. A struggle ensues over Hyman's pistol, with Carr managing to eject the magazine, rendering the gun useless. Three minutes into the ordeal, sirens signal the arrival of backup. However, Carr persists in his assault on Hyman. It takes a shot from a police officer's taser gun and the combined effort of three other officers to pry Carr off Hyman. On Tuesday, May 9, 2023, on Interstate 64 eastbound at milepost 72, an ISP trooper stopped to help a stranded motorist on the right shoulder. Upon reaching the scene, the trooper encountered 23-year-old Brandon Griffin of Albuquerque and 31-year-old Christine Santos in the vehicle. A second ISP officer arrived shortly after for routine assistance. While at the scene, a fight broke out, leading to gunfire exchanges between Griffin and one of the responding officers, 